To support this podcast, go to positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amount is appreciated. Once again, positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Thank you and enjoy the program. Oh, it's summer. Jay here, positivesarcasm.com, recorded here from the Spare Parts Studio. 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 There's a, there's a T in there. Alongside New Hampshire's beautiful seacoast. Like, subscribe, share, donate, positive sarcasm.com slash donate. Any amounts appreciate. Check out my website. Check out everything PS related. Instagram, you can slide in my DMs there if you want, at positive underscore sarcasm. Um, but you can always hit me up through my website, positive sarcasm.com. Um, my Outlook email, positive sarcasm at outlook.com. You can email me there directly. Um, and of course, anything else PS related, positive sarcasm.com. Like, subscribe, share, donate, positive sarcasm.com. Slash donate, any amounts appreciated. It's officially summer. It's 86 degrees out and humid alongside New Hampshire's beautiful seacoast. Uh, keeping it super casual today, but we'll talk about that. We'll get into some, what do we normally talk? We'll talk about aesthetic wellness. We're going to get into some aesthetic wellness, how to, dr- how, a way of dressing in the summertime that is going to keep you cool. But still make you look cool. Right? Right. Sure. Okay. Fine. I'll get to it. I'll keep it simple. You guys know I like to dress well. Um, I have, you know me, I have 32 different color V necks and crew necks. Um, I got my sport coats. I got my dress pants. I generally don't wear jeans, they just don't work with me. So I'm always wearing some type of chino or some type of light linen. Um, you know, something to that effect or a, pair, a nice pair of boarding shorts, whatever. So I I like to look at, and I want to give you just a little something that you guys can work with here before we get to uh, dig.com's Q&A. Like just a little quick, if you're looking to wear something and like look good in the summertime and just not wear a pair of bro shorts um, and just throw on some regular, which is fine. You can get away with that, but there is a way of still looking really good, really dressy, but keeping it casual like you're not going to sweat your face off during this whole summer month um so and yes i am drinking hot coffee but that's fine reason reason i'm drinking hot coffee is because i didn't make any iced coffee i probably should make some iced coffee because it's going to be an awesome day tomorrow and and it's going to be a hot day tomorrow what let me get to it here i want to keep this podcast short and sweet um Ooh, definitely. Thank God. Thank God for AC. I officially turned on the AC. That's when you know it's hot out. When I turn on the AC, it's a spicy outside. So I'll get this. Let me get this popping for you. Um, if you're if you want to look good during the summertime, but you also want to look cool, there is a way. First of all, it all starts with the pants. Obviously, you can go with uh, like a pair of like uh, old navy shorts with like the an- the picture of the anchors on them or the lobsters on them or something like that. You know what? That's fine. That's totally fine. You could throw on a pair of nice sneakers, or you could throw on a pair of, uh, 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 you know, boat like a Sperry boat shoe, or whomever else makes boat shoes, or you can go with like a nice pair of sandals. But if you really, really want to get some style points out of it, I have a couple ideas for you um, that will get you through the summertime. And you can, uh, you can do your price points and, and see what you can afford. But for now, we're just going to go with the basic style premises of what you're looking for. In terms of this is the style you want. Now you can go and look for where it's most cost efficient. Maybe it's Old Navy. Maybe it's TJ Maxx. But you're looking for linen. Linen and cotton breathe. Okay. Polyester does not breathe. Good luck to you. Linen pants. First of all, if it looks like linen but it's made out of polyester, that's – that's don't, don't do that. Stick with linen and cotton or just linen in general. It's much – It'll be a little bit of a baggier fit, but it'll be a little more relaxing. It'll look like you're on the, it'll look like you're you're walking along the Amalfi Coast in Italy. It's kind of like that. It's really really cool, but the style is still fantastic, especially during the summertime. So it doesn't look like you're trying too hard, but you definitely at least put some thought into what you wore. So it starts with the pant, okay? Because if you want to look good during the day and during the night. You start with the pant. You can go with the button-down shirt. There are plenty of linen button-down shirts, but they're a little baggy. Um, they're not very flattering to your body type. And a lot of the guys uh, who wear them generally, you know, the, the Instagrammers who have, like, the giant white beards, even though those beards are painted because they're 30 years old and no 30-year-old has a fully white beard. But the 
uh, the buttons are like it's like it's like three buttons down and it's just kind of hanging there nobody does that nobody does that you don't do that just don't okay it's that's too much it's too much for the reason is you perp it, you purposely out, went out of your way to leave a couple buttons undone now if you do one and then maybe two okay it makes sense three three you're trying too hard so don't go with the linen shirt if you can get like a a v-neck like that's why a, a v-neck with linen pants can absolutely it works you can get it in many different colors it's far less expensive you can get them in different patterns a v-neck like this shows off your neckline shows off your guns it, it it's great with it looks great on your chest it rolls over your waistline gently so if you're wearing a belt it fits perfectly fine it looks very very dressy if you go with like a black one or a nice white one um, you can go with a crew neck but at the end of the day the v-neck is where the casual separates from the the formal and a v-neck can do that or like a henley a he like a linen henley or a nice breathable henley um, which has a bit of a longer sleeve that you can roll up that will also give you some style points as well especially if you can find it in a v-neck but we'll stick with just the standard v-neck like this is just a run-of-the-mill uh vented cotton v-neck it's breathable it feels nice um, it's inexpensive, but the pant, the pant is what you really want to seek out. And there's plenty of companies that make them. Banana Republic, Banana Republic is definitely a perfect example of a pant that is breathable, that will look good. And there's other ways, I think there's other photos, like here's another breathable Banana Republic. They're generally a little loose fitting, but you can get them a little tight if you want to. Here's a perfect example. like. Look at this 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 fine looking gentleman right here. It's got a little bit of a bag to it, so it's breathe it's breathable during the day and at night. I mean, if you're on the beach, you're not wearing that. But if it, the sun's going down, you're going to dinner. It's in a, and it's a warm environment. You're definitely gonna want that breathability for your gentleman's area. So this is a perfect if you're gonna start with that. You're always gonna start with the pant, what the color is of the linen pant, and you should have a few of these in your wardrobe. I'd say like between two and four pairs of linen now you can go with a contrasting color like a white or a black or a gray but then you're gonna want some playful colors like a green or a blue or a red reds a little more difficult to pull off cranberry is tough to pull off but if you've got like a green or a blue like a light blue or a dark blue and then maybe if you're into if you work well with the color green um, then go from there but generally going with your contrasting colors like or even a brown Brown works too. Uh, so white, brown, uh, gray, black, and then maybe like a blue, a light blue or a navy blue, and a linen will do you good. So that's your pant. Now, as far as um, your, sho your shoes, you can go with like a, a, a low top Puma or Adidas if you want to be a more sporty, but the classic boat shoe is not going to steer you wrong. They also have other more oceany sandals that you can go with, but if you're not really sure, if you're just looking to have a quick wardrobe to go to in case you're going to go to the pool side or the evening side and it's nice and warm out, you can go with just a standard uh, a standard boat shoe that you throw on with some ankle socks so that they don't show because you don't ankle socks are perfect it'll show it obviously shows up your ankles but you're not riding that dress sock all the way up and sweating your ass off so boat shoe with a nice ankle uh you know a heel sock excuse me um so no show socks with a with a boat shoe or something sporty like a puma or an adidas um there are some more expensive brands out there but a puma you can pick up for about 25 bucks so that would be perfect. And a boat shoe, if you look hard enough, you can pick them up for between 15 and $25. Uh, be mindful, though, if you go with a boat shoe, there's polyester and then there's leather. I'm generally not a fan of wearing poly-based upper shoes because it's cheap. I don't like that. So try to find yourself some leather uppers. The leather upper, of course, is the entire upper of the shoe. The bottom can be rubber. It can be whatever you want it to be. But that thing that looks like leather should be leather all right so you got your boat shoe you got your linen you wear like a nice standard like i mean i don't need to throw up a picture of a v-neck because 
I'm wearing one. Um, and it fits men of all sizes. If you're skinny, if you're short, if you're a little stout, if, you, if you're jacked, V-necks are the way to go. Now, if you want to throw on some jewelry, maybe you got like a, a, an engraved ring or maybe a watch, that's fine. But do you can you wear a leather watch uh, when rocking all this stuff? Yes, you can. But if you want to go with something a little more casual on your watches, you can go with something like this. Now, this is your standard. This is an Edix Le Vaubert. This is my field watch. But I have switched it out with one of my NATO straps. What is a NATO strap? I'll show you. A NATO strap, as I've talked about in previous podcasts, is a nylon uh, strap that is very friendly in the water, much more breathable. You can get it in many different colors. They're very inexpensive. Like I said, different colors. Here's another one. Um, very red, white, and blue, Old Navy-ish. They got a thousand colors of them. They're all inexpensive. They'll fit just about any. They'll fit any watch. You just have to do the measurement from where the pin starts and where the pin ends on the wrist of the watch here. So basically, right here to here. And once you do it, it's going to be in millimeters. Then you'll order that band in that in that width, and then you'll take the band off. You'll keep the pins on, and you will slide the the NATO strap in like that so it wraps because you're actually going to be you're not going to be clicking it together you're going to be wrapping it around your hand and it makes it's beautiful for any watch whether you're just running like a timex or a basic seiko all the way up to like an omega speedmaster or a, a huge bulova or a u-boat or a nixon or um some other all these quartz, uh, all these Swiss quartz watches that I wear, they can all Christopher Ward that I have, they all can rock NATO straps. So it's another way of getting some style points f uh, for a, a low amount of effort to complement your linen. So basically, linen, some nice linen pants, a, 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 a respectable looking V-neck, some boat shoes with some with some socks that you can't see when you put on your shoes. And then switch out your watch. Um, you can take the, the strap off your watch. If you don't want to buy another watch, just take the strap off your watch with a little pin with a little pin tool, and then just throw on your native strap your NATO strap, and then you're good to go. And you can rock this look pretty much all summer long for you know a small amount of investable money. A couple hundred bucks wardrobe will probably do you good. You'll only wear it a few times a year, but you'll always have it. You'll always have it. So these are my – this is my opinion based on, uh, you know, obviously a lot of light reading of, you know, dozens of magazine articles on how to look. Um, so I that's what I definitely recommend. And like I said, with V-necks, you can find them um, pretty much anywhere. Uh, so give me one second. Just responding to a text here. Yes, I am podcast – I am texting while podcasting. Uh, but – there we go. Okay. Whew. But, yeah, I am drinking hot coffee, but that's okay. I got the AC on, and it's backed by some ice-cold water. Well, not ice-cold, but definitely cold. Refrigerated water. You know what I'm saying? So, nice V-neck, some linen, NATO strap, and some boat shoes. Or, if you really want to air it out, some nice leather-topped sandals. And when I say the st just leather top, like the sandal, the actual top that slides between your toes, that's what you need. Just the rest, and then the rest of it's fine. You can just go with whatever. Don't go with something like you know, like uh, like some red and black pumas. That would be that'd be silly. Um, so, and anyways, so yeah, these are these are some Jeff definitely trust me. It's a great look. It's it is. It's a great look. It's a timeless look. Um, and thank me later. So, but oh man, look at that! I like I like that strap. That's a sweet looking strap. The problem with white, as is in everything else, is it gets dirty. So unless you go with like a, a strap like this where the white's on the inside and you got the blue protecting it on the outside. I actually have this one. I'm wearing this one. I'm wearing this one right now. The Tundra, navy and gray. I'm wearing that um, with an Edix label bear, uh, white with, um, with a silver dial. Uh, or white, yeah, so great looking watch, simple looking watch, very clean. White works, absolutely, period, point blank. Um, but that's a great looking strap right there. That's, by the way, there's there's plenty of, of, of companies like Crown and Buckle, but the one you want to go to is NATO Strap Co. 
dot com. If you want to buy a few, there's right now they got a sale, no code needed. Buy two straps, get one free, and that's basically you can get these straps for like between ten and twelve bucks at the minimum. They might even have some. Uh, they got also they got ones for Apple watches, quick release ones, and they probably have some specials too, where you can buy some cheap ones. And they got all kinds of colors. Fantastic. In the meantime, do you want to close up shop with some Q and A? We're at fifteen minutes, so let's go ahead and get a couple of these out of the way. By the way, if you want to support this podcast, go to positivesarcasm.com slash donate. Any amounts appreciated. If you want to know why there's a, a the letter B on this Williams Sonoma coffee mug? The answer is I have no idea, but I do have two of them. Um, maybe the B is for brew. I don't know. What do you think? But coffee's great. It's freshly blended. Um, and it's given me that pick me up I need to get to this podcast without yawning, at least for the first 16 minutes. Mm. Man, summer has been good to me so far and it's going to end with a bang. I can promise you that. This summer is going to end with a bang. So get your get your popcorn ready. Anyways, here we are. We're on the good old-fashioned dig.com, so let's get a reading. Is it up on the screen? Yes, it is. <clears throat> My partner and I live in a great neighborhood in a very cost-of-living city, very high cost-of-living city. Our landlords live below us, and they are lovely. Our rent is way below market, and we need help with yard work. And re- We help with yard work and regular household maintenance, as well as do things like occasionally pet sit for them. We do not have a formal arrangement or even a lease. We've been here for 15 years, and in that time, they've never raised our rent. We voluntarily raised that ourselves once by about 10%. When we both started working at home, since utilities are included, and we wanted to make up for increased usage. Very well. My partner and I disagree on whether we should raise it ourselves again. With the way rent and other costs have exploded in the past few years, our our below market rate is even further below market rate. But I also think that our landlords will even need more help from us as they age. They're in good health but in their 70s. My partner and I both make decent salaries and could afford to pay more monthly. We also grew up poor and our below market rent is a big factor in our current financial stability. And pretty much the only reason we have a good amount of savings now. We have about $100,000 saved, which sounds like a lot, but we truly not go far if we want to buy a house in our area. These people must live in San Francisco. I think we should keep saving as much as we can, knowing that one day we'll need to move because they may sell the house or simply because we'll get sick of living and working in a tiny one-bedroom walk-up with no laundry. Of course, they could ask us to pay more, and we would. My partner thinks it's our responsibility to self-declare an increase and start paying more because our landlords are too nice to ask us. If we ask the landlords outright if we should pay more and they likely waive it off or change the subject because they do not think it like to discuss money, is my partner right or I think we should keep quietly saving as much as we can? Your landlords like you. They don't want to charge you more. Then leave it alone. All right? In my opinion, you should be saving for a house. You should, I mean, there are a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers out there that think, don't even waste your time getting a mortgage, blah, blah, blah. Listen, in my opinion, you should be striving for a mortgage or saving for a house. It's just how I am. My, my American dream is to have that beautiful house or some type of beautiful house near the seacoast. That's the way I that's the way I'm built. And if you want to save money simply to buy a house, then what are you doing there asking to pay more rent? Just they like you. You're paying on time. You're helping out. And if they don't want to charge you more because, look, if you go – somebody else moves in what if they're not a very good tenant and how much money are you actually going to be getting out of that new tenant and how long are they going to be staying there for so don't worry about any of it save your money stay as long as you feel like it and then after that go move out and go find a real house but obviously in your area which i'm assuming is probably san francisco if you've already got a hundred thousand dollars saved and that's not enough yeah you're probably living you probably live on the west coast my partner and I both make decent salaries, $100,000 saved, not enough to buy a house in the area. Okay. Yeah, you live in San Fran. Don't say anything to the landlords. They're not, they're not saying anything. You don't say anything. Keep doing your thing. They want to charge you more. They would charge you more. And if they're not charging you more, leave it alone. God. Stop making it harder for other people. All right. What we got? 19 minutes? Let's do another one. Um, I have a problem with two employees refusing, wait, refusing shared twin room accommodations, and I want to handle it right. They stay, they stay nearly one or two weeks away every month for three to four days, and both are complaining they can't sleep because the other person snores. Our hotel expenses are quite high, and they stay in nice hotel rooms. Other engineers don't have a problem with sharing. 
Uh, I'm thinking of telling them if they like a single room, they must pay the difference. No. No. Get... No. Get them separate rooms, please. Get them separate rooms. You can ask them if they want to share a room, but if they don't want to share a room, don't put them in the same room together. You have to ask them, do you want to, You guys want to share a room? Is it okay if you share a room? Because if you do, I will give you a bigger pay stipend. So a stipend is basically, for example, a uh, company sends you away, you get a hotel, and then they give you a stipend to spend in the area, like a card or, or, or an amount of cash, and you can use that money to buy groceries or go out to dinner or get transportation. Um, if you, if they decide, Hey, you could be like, listen, if you guys want to get, we'll give you, you know, you're going to get your rooms. You're going to get your stipend. No problem. If you decide to share a room together, we will give you a little bit extra in your stipend that you can do to use whatever you want. You don't even have to spend your money in your stipend. You can just put it in the bank and you're good. It's totally up to you, but you can make it an option. Don't force it. It should, it's kind of. It kind of unreasonable. It's definitely a first world problem, um, it, and for me, it would depend a lot on who I was staying with. I mean, I've made demands like that. I've made demands where I didn't want to be on like some crappy jetliner, like Spirit or something. I said I'm not flying those garbage airlines. Put me on something that's uh, that's that's halfway decent, please, like Delta or JetBlue, and I've gotten my way. Um, so yeah, that don't don't make them stay together. Let's do one more. I have lard long harbored what I thought was a harmless crush on a friend of mine, Jordan. But now another friend, Alex, has told Jordan, and Jordan is threatening me with a restraining order. Ooh. I am livid that I told Alex about my crush and that Alex betrayed my confidence. I admit that some of the things I've done were probably not great decisions, but those actions weren't harming Jordan in the least. So long as Jordan didn't know about them. Now I'm torn because I'm afraid Jordan is called, going to call the police. If they call the police, I'm, I'll probably need to throw away any, any evidence ahead of time. Evidence of what? What did you do? What did you say? What have you stolen or or collecting? Greasy? But that is almost impossible for me to come to terms with. This situation is rapidly spiraling out of control. I don't feel like there's any non anybody non-judgmental I can go to for help. Uh, how can I make amends with Jordan in a way that honestly atones for what I've done while also leaving the poss- open the possibility of getting our together getting together romantically? Uh, no, you're, this is done. This is done. This is completely fried. This person's not interested in you and they're threatening you with a restraining order. Whatever you have, ditch it and stop contacting your friend and don't go near Jordan. This is, this is, look, it's done. Fuck it. Move on. Go focus on you. Go work really, really hard on you and forget about this Jordan person. Forget about your friend. Don't talk to anybody. Ditch everything. And if Jordan contacts you for any reason, which they don't just be like, listen, you know, it was a poor decision on my part to, to bring this up and I'm not bothering you anymore. Like, I, I, don't say anything else. and be like, I'm not bothering you. Like, I made a mistake. I'm out. I, I'm, you're good. Do go do your thing. And that's it. Bye. Take care. Because you're never going to talk to this person again. They're never going to want to talk to you again. It, it's you're not going to get together with this person romantically. OK, you're probably ugly. You're probably not attractive. You probably have no redeeming qualities about you. You need to go and reinvent yourself and work really, really hard to become somebody who is of interest to you. Who who could who could be of it? It could be interested in you. But until then, don't worry about any of that. Jordan doesn't like you. Jordan doesn't want anything to do with you. You need to completely, immediately ditch any information. Delete all information. Delete text messages, uh, emails, accounts, whatever. Just. That's it. Don't post anything on social media. Nothing. Ghost. The best thing you can do is go completely ghost. And this is not so you can get their attention. This is to save your own ass. To protect your own ass. Yeah, you got a crush on somebody. That's fine. You're allowed to have crushes on people. You're allowed to be attracted and like people. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if they don't like you, if they're not interested in you, don't worry about it. That's not your thing. Move on. And when I say move on, move on to continue focusing on you, improving you, stronger you, healthier you, smarter you, more cultured you, more affordable you, more uh, uh, more money in your pocket you, more invested you, more confident you, you know, all that stuff. Make sure your hair is proper. Make sure your breath is good. Your teeth are clean and taken care of. Your face has is no blemishes. You have a strong body a proper posture 
you're better spoken. All these things that you could be focusing on, on instead of whether or not this Jordan person likes you. Ditch all that. None of it's going to do you any good right now. You need to never contact these people again. Um, and that's it. Because if you haven't done any... Like, if there's no evidence for her to, for this person to give put a restraining order on you, great. Then just... They're basically... They're saying, get away from me or I'll call the police. And you know what you need to do? So not say anything. Your silence is a way of saying, okay, cool. You win because you're right. And move on from there. That's all you can do at this point. To at least get you out of a peculiar situation. And if there is things that you've collected or whatever, I don't know what it is that you have for evidence, but all that needs to go and it needs to go in a hurry. And I mean immediately. Okay? Go save your own ass. You can find me on Instagram at positive underscore sarcasm. You can email me directly positive sarcasm at outlook.com. You can find my website positive sarcasm.com. Uh, all your needs, body, uh, you know, fitness fitness competition. You need posing music for you bodybuilders out there, your physique competitors, and I mean the field one ones, not the men ones. The men ones don't get that. Go ahead, look me up, send the request. I'll get it done. As always, check out anything else I got uh, available on my website. You can always email me directly. Like, subscribe, share, donate. PositiveSarcasm.com slash donate. Any amounts appreciated. You can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are available. And the video version of this podcast is available on Rumble and on YouTube. Just look for Positive Sarcasm podcast in the meantime thank you for listening watching and subscribing and i will check on you next week have a great day everybody recorded here from the spare parts studio alongside new hampshire's beautiful seacoast for entertainment purposes only this has been a positive sarcasm presentation